This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh. Okay, so what today is about in the first half of Hydra's lecture is I just want to tidy a few ends up of Fourier series before moving on to the Fourier transform. So we're just wrapping a few odds and ends up because if we don't get those odds and ends sorted, then the Fourier transform, there might be a, a few loose ends which are inappropriate. So we're actually just going to go back to something really basic and look at frequency and period again. So we're going to slide 14. So you'll find a whole bunch of fun exam questions on this problem here. So if we look at the top diagram, x1, it's a, a sequence of cosines and sines and cosines of different frequencies. And the question in the exam, if it, well, question in the exam tends to break down the question into two, two, two steps. So really, hand holds you. But the question simply would be, what's the Fourier transform of x1 of t? Now, what usually happens is before you've seen, or before you've been suggested a, a, sim a simple way of doing this, it's very tempting to just do the Fourier series integral. So you plug it into the integral of x of t cos omega t and churn away for two and a half pages of algebra and out pops an answer. And if you're lucky, you've got it right. So my rule of thumb, by the way, is that if you're solving a problem and it's taking more than about a page of moderately sized writing to do, it's probably wrong. You've gone in the wrong direction. Or it's not completely wrong, but you're certainly doing it in a far more complicated way than it, it should be. I mean, what we should note, um, at least for x1, is that that is already in the form of a Fourier series. You just need to identify it as being a Fourier series. Because for all a Fourier series decomposition is to decompose a periodic signal in terms of sines and cosines. So the first thing we need to do is to work out what the period or what the fundamental frequency of x1 of t is. So how do we work that out? Anyone want to have a guess at what the fundamental frequency is? Okay, um, good. It's good not to guess, because if I guessed, it's bound to get it wrong. So I, I don't even know what the answer is, so we're going to work through it together. Um, but what I do know is what I am going to guess uh, to begin with is that I'm going to assume that x1 of t is in fact a periodic signal. So I'm going to assume that for a moment. So assume x1 of t is, in fact, uh, periodic. So what that means is all your sines and cosines are going to have frequencies that are an integer multiple of a fundamental. So if we call this frequency omega 1, omega 2, and omega 3, then omega 1, which equals a half, should equal some multiple, and I don't know what it is, of omega naught. And similarly, omega 2, which equals 2 thirds, should equal a different multiple of omega naught, and so on. OK, so n1, n2, and n3 must be integers. So the question is, can you find out any relationships uh, that meet all of those equations? And basically what you're looking for is a common divisor. So it's a sort of minimum common divisor. Not any common divisor, but the minimum one. So you can do a few tricks. Now, there's no elegant way of doing this. So if you find a better way of doing it, fantastic. But I'd probably start off and I'd divide these first two, these first two equations. So I do n2 divided by n1 is 2 thirds divided by a half, which seems to be 4 thirds. Or in other words, 4 times n1 is 3 times n2. So my first guess for what n1 and n2 could be is that uh, I think the lowest common divisor to make that true is that n1 is 3 and n2 is 4. Because then you'll give 12 is 12. And I don't think there are any smaller integers that satisfy that equation. Does that make sense? 
And it has to, so whatever the value of omega naught is, um, the integers n1 and n2 and n3, they have to satisfy all of those three equations. So now what we could do is do it for, let's divide omega 2 by omega 3. So I've got n2 divided by n3 is um, 2 thirds divided by 7 6 or 6 over 7. So what's that? That's um, 12 over 21. Now, but we know that n2 is 4. Uh, so I could rearrange this. Now, that, so, sorry, that's 21 times n2. You'll, you'll have to put my distinguishing between l's and 1's is not very good. So divide both sides by uh, n2, which is 4, and you'll get that. And so you can see that I think n3 is equal to 7. Yep. Right, um, not really. The, so this course isn't really about a proof, but you do want to find the lowest common denominator. So if you kind of intuitively know they're the lowest common denominator. Um, but you could go through the sequence. You could try different pairs, but there are probably an infinite number of them. So, um, yeah. OK. The, so in general, uh, when you answer exam questions, and we'll discuss this later in the semester, it would be absolutely wonderful, yeah, try and show your working as clearly as possible to, to the marker. So if you think of a clever way of showing all the different options, why not? But obviously don't spend ages doing it. OK, so just wrapping this one up, the, then the question is, what's omega naught? Well, omega naught hopefully will come the same from satisfying each of these. So if n1 is 3, then omega naught is 1, 6. And I think you'll find that that will be true all the way through. So if I go up to this waveform here, in fact, well, I've done it now. Um, this is, is 2 plus 7 times cos of n1 omega naught. n1 was 3, so that's 3 omega naught plus 3 times sine of n2 times omega naught, and n2 was 4, plus 5 times cos of n3 times omega naught, so that's, that was 7. And the question is now, what are the Fourier series coefficients? So let's, let's go through them. So remember, you've got a, a n's and b n's. An's correspond to cosine waves, Bn's correspond to sine waves. And the first term, the DC coefficient, is A0 divided by 2. So what's A0? Yeah. What's A1? Well, that actually corresponds to frequency of 1 omega naught. But that there's actually the amplitude of omega naught, frequency at omega naught, is actually 0. So A1 is equal to 0, as is A2. So A1 is equal to A2, is equal to 0. Now, amplitude of A3 corresponds to the frequency of 3 omega naught, so that's 7. Um, A4 is equal to 0, as is A5 and A6. Uh, A7 corresponds to the frequency cos omega naught, uh, cos 7 omega naught, so A7 is equal to 5. And that's how you list them. And then you could do the same for the signs. There's actually only one sine coefficient, and that corresponds to B4. So B4 is equal to 4. There are three, yeah. So that's B4, and not the different version of data in Star Trek, which is B4 as well. Anyway, um, so you do that. So you see, there's what you've done now is to already identify it's a Fourier series, and not to go through lots of tedious calculations. OK, so I've got, go on. Uh, because um, A0 over 2 is a DC coefficient. So A0 is 2 times 2. 
So where I want to finish off, just uh, I've got a minute, um, is to have a look at the second signal, um, which I think is of interest because this will help you do some more stuff. Does anyone know or can anyone deduce, is X2 a periodic signal? Yeah. So it's interesting that the sum of two periodic signals is not necessarily periodic. Okay, this doesn't always happen all the time, but it is an important point. So in X2, cos 2t is periodic with frequency, with fundamental frequency of 2, whereas the second frequency is sine pi t is periodic with frequency pi. But if you try to find a common divisor between those two, so if you wrote this as omega 1 is 2, is n times, or n1 times omega naught, and omega 2 is pi, is n2 times omega naught. If you take the ratio of those, then you've got, for example, pi over 2 is n2 over 1. And as we know, pi cannot be represented as a rational number. And therefore, there's no integer solutions to that equation. And therefore, x of 2 is non-periodic and does not have a Fourier series. Yeah, so that's, I think that's a slightly different application of a theory. Um, so there are ways of taking a non-periodic signal and truncating it and then pretending it's periodic. But if we were to do, uh, I've, that, that's, I don't know what they're teaching there, but I think it's important to realise here that the sum of two periodic signals are not always periodic, and this is an example. Okay, so um, this is, so it's non-periodic and does not have a Fourier series. Okay, so I'll see you on Wednesday for the tutorial. We've got an examples class on Thursday and then the next lecture's on Friday. This production is copyright, the University of Edinburgh.